What's up guys, it's Lou from Unbox Therapy and today we're taking a look at the Kobo Vox e-reader. Now this is a lot more than an e-reader, it's a budget Android tablet at $199, it's a real competitor, going up against the likes of the Kindle Fire for sure, and uh, what you're going to get is a Android device, so it's not locked down to any sort of e-reader characteristics it has e-reader functionality but it's also got android 2.3 so you can do all kinds of stuff with it obviously browse the web email well anything you can do with android right and as, and, and as you guys notice right away a seven inch device is kind of a, a really convenient size it's about the size of a paperback novel um, really easy to use with one hand and uh, i sort of think a nice stop gap from you know in between your phone and your standard 10 inch tablet uh, they pulled a little bit of an Apple-esque move here. You're getting three, uh, or maybe a little better, <laughs> you're getting three Kobo stickers telling you to read more often. You can uh, throw those around the house to try and motivate yourself. <laughs> and uh, a little bit more paperwork as well. Um, we've got our power brick, which has micro USB on one side, which is nice because you don't have some proprietary connector, which can be annoying. And then you get your little power adapter portion that fits on the front and this will obviously vary by region so you know that you know you'll probably be able to pick up some other tips if need be if you're going to be traveling i i kind of don't mind those power adapters or you can just take it off to 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 help it fit in certain bags or whatever and you're also going to get a micro usb cable obviously that's for hooking up to your computer if you choose to do that so what else is in here we get a few books to get us started that's included we've also got a chance at a trip to Europe, I believe. So, yeah, I mean, that's cool. I won't mind going to Europe. How about you? <laughs> and then uh, we've got a super straightforward user manual, which you're not even going to have to look at because it's basically pull it out, turn it on. You know, I mean, there's really not much else to it. And uh, after you peel away the protective screen, you can notice these uh, capacitive touch buttons down along the bottom that control your menu, back, etc., home. And you've also got your volume rocker on the left-hand side. There's a better look at those capacitive touch touch buttons. The back of the unit is a real nice matte finish, so it ain't a fingerprint magnet. It's a nice grip. You got a micro SD expansion port, so 8 gigabytes internally, and then micro SD. Uh, the volume rocker, micro USB on the bottom, as I mentioned earlier. Well, the power button and an LED on top. The speaker in the top right corner, and there's a better look at that power button, so... Anyways, that's a look around the device, and let's go ahead and get it set up. Um, this is a very straightforward process, but Kobo has skinned it. And I'm not saying I mind the skin in this case. Sometimes Android skins come off as, you know, uh, hokey pokey, if you know what I'm saying. This one actually has kind of a, a cool vibe to it, a nice simplicity to it. Um, but what that means is that when you get in the OS, when you finally get it all booted up, everything is very reader-centric. So uh, the way it's set up to begin with is, is, is as a reading device from a software standpoint. Of course, you can change that experience if you if you want to. So, uh, as you guys notice, I love typing on devices this size. It's a real nice stop gap. Thumb typing in portrait mode, holding the device in portrait mode, since it's only about the length of your hand, means that you, there's very little fatigue in using a device like this for a long, long period of time. Definitely less fatigue than a 10-inch device, which, you know, is where the marketplace has really been going for the longest time. Now, as you guys notice, there's a lot of Facebook additions here. Audio comes pre-installed. I'm not going to hate on that. As you guys know, I love to use audio. Um, but you might argue that there's a little bit too much bloatware pre-installed here. Um, there's a lot of extras. But, uh, you know, I guess we've all gotten used to that over the years. And um, another thing to mention is that there's no YouTube app pre-installed. Instead, um, when you search here for YouTube, it brings you to the mobile web page. Now, I don't know why that is. Maybe there's a YouTube available in the App Store. I'll take a look before the review. But that's okay because, you know, the mobile page works just like an app, more or less. We'll go ahead and launch the most recent episode of the Beast Feed. What's the Beast Feed? Oh, that's my other channel. Here's a little shameless promotion. If you guys haven't checked out my news channel, it's called the Beast Feed. That's YouTube.com slash Beast Feed. Go and check that stuff out. I think you might like it as well. Anyways, back to what we're talking about here. Um... This is not the quickest device. It's about 800 megahertz, but but hey, you're paying 199 for it, so uh, I think it's a real good value. I've placed a couple of devices out here on the table: the Galaxy Tab 10.1, the Kobo Vox, and my Nexus S. I mean, the Nexus S form factor. We all know it. We all know a phone's form factor. It's in your pocket all the time. Um, you know, really easy to operate and obvious to operate. 
Um, and then on the far end of the spectrum, we've got where tablets have basically gone more more or less. And uh, in portrait mode, this thing is really unwieldy. I mean, it, it, it sort of is top heavy. It feels strange using it that way. You don't have that issue in landscape mode, but it's still a heavy device and you don't really want to operate it, you know, with one hand. That's just the way it is. That's, that's the size. Uh, you can get a nice split keyboard and, uh, you know, get away with it, but there is going to be some fatigue just because of, you know, the physical layout. Now, it's very, very thin. It's, it's much thinner than the Kobo box you can see here. Um, and there's a look at the form factor from the top side. So let's go ahead and take a look at the Vox. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, nice matte finish on the back. Feels really good in your hand in one hand, much like a paperback novel, of course. And, you know, you've had paperback novels at this form factor for a long, long time. And that's not by accident. It's really the perfect size for one-handed reading, one-handed usage. So, um, you know, it really lends itself to usability. Uh, it's not the lightest device. In fact, I think that the Tab 10 One might actually be a little bit lighter. It's hard to tell because of the weight distribution. Um, but like I said, you've got to kind of curb your expectations, you know, because of the price of the device. It's a really good entry level tablet. Can do everything an Android tablet can do, um, which I really appreciate, and uh, it can do it for 199. Now. We're going to have to wait and see the Amazon Kindle Fire because that's probably going to be its closest competitor. Again, it's e-reader centric and the exact same form factor. I do have one of those coming in, you know, mid-month. So we'll throw those ones up against each other. There's a better look at the thickness. I think, I mean, it might actually be twice as thick, but that doesn't say much because the Galaxy Tab 10 One is ridiculously thin. I mean, you could you could slice fruit with that baby. Okay, that, I might be exaggerating. So, some other specs to mention. This thing has got you know um, a seven inch, ten twenty four by six hundred screen. Um, I believe I said eight gigabytes of internal storage earlier. I'll say it again. Expandable micro SD memory, which is always welcome, and it's supposedly got six hours of battery life. I'll figure it out out if that's the case and let you know in the review. Anyway, guys, if you found this content to be helpful, exciting in any way, then hopefully you can like and favorite this content as it does help me out a bunch. I've mentioned it before. Um, other than that, hopefully you can check out my new channel. Like Once again, that's my news channel. Um, it's youtube.com slash beastfeed. And uh, other than that, I want to thank you for your viewership. You guys make this stuff possible. I love making it. I hope you love watching it. All right, guys, until next time. And as always, thanks for watching. Later.